Hello everyone, let's look at this trick integral here. We have a product of two trick functions and then each function has a second power. So we have sine squared x times cosine squared x. And since both powers are even, then we cannot really use um, the u sub method for the uh, for the powers of sine and cosine. Because if you have an odd power for either the sine or the cosine, we can reserve a copy, turn it into an even power, and then we can use the Pythagorean identity to turn it to turn one into the other, and then we can make a U sub. But for this one, we cannot really do that because they're both even. So if we reserve a copy, then we are going to just turn it into an odd power, which will not allow us to use the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Um, we can actually use the half angle formula for for this. And the way to do it is that, well, actually, first, let's recall the half angle formulas. So we are going to get the half angle formulas. And this time, we got to use both the sine version and the cosine version. Okay, so <clears throat> one of them is the sine version, which is sine square. Okay, actually, let me just highlight this x right here. So sine square x is equal to one over two times one minus, and then we are gonna get cosine of two x And then actually, I would say that the cosine version is almost exactly the same, which is just cosine square x is equal to 1 half times 1 minus. No, actually, it's 1 plus, right? So it will be cosine of 2 times x. Now, do you see how similar they are? It's just really this sign that's different the form is exactly the same for both formulas right here. So <clears throat> what we are going to do is that we are going to rewrite the sine x, I mean the sine square x, and then the cosine square x into those two forms. And then you may say, that looks worse. But then we don't have a square anymore, even though it looks worse. So that's actually a good thing. So let's do that. And by the way, let me tell you bad news. You're still going to get a square because you are actually multiplying those two expressions and you are still going to get a square on the cosine. And in that case, we actually need to do it one more time. Okay, but we are not there yet. So let's just do what we can do right now. So we are going to write down the integral, right? And then this sine square x right here is going to be replaced by all this expression right here. So we have actually, let me just color the two different formulas. I don't know whether that's an easy way to do it, but I think that we can do that, right? So we can do that here. And then of course the, the X is going to be in a different color, which will be better that way. Okay, so now we are going to turn the sine square into the one half times one minus cosine two x. So let's put that here. So we have one half, right? So we have one half and then times one minus cosine of two x. Okay, just two x. And then what do we get next? Next one is the cosine square, so we can also rewrite that one. So we are going to have 1 over 2, and then 1 plus cosine of 2x, and then the dx. Okay, so when we get to this expression right here, uh, we have a one half in front of this group, and then there is one half in front of this. And so if we can actually, this is all multiplication, right? And so we can actually multiply the one half and that one half together, then we are going to get one fourth. But because that's a constant, we can actually bring it outside the integral so that we don't need to worry about it at this point. Eventually, all we need to do is to distribute it back. So we can bring the one over four outside. Okay, so 
the one half times the one half will give you this one over four. And then you still have all those stuff in there. So we are going to get one minus cosine two X and then times the other one, which is one plus cosine of two X. Now, I just want to recall one more thing here. If you multiply an expression by its conjugate, you are going to get a um, something that's really nice, right? So let's just also recall that. So let's just recall something right here. Um, if you do a minus b times a plus b, then you are going to get what? a squared minus b squared. That's actually called the difference of two squares. And so we, we have the exact same situation right here. The a is the one, and then the b is the cosine two x. So a plus b, a minus b. And we multiply them, we are gonna square the one, and then we are gonna square the cosine of two x, and then we gotta take that difference. So let's do that. So continuing with the step, then we are gonna still have the one over four and outside the integral. And then we are going to get what? Um, square of the a, which is the one in this case. So we are getting one, right? You're just going to square it. And then we are going to get a minus. Now minus what? Minus the square of the cosine 2x. So we are going to get the cosine 2x right here. Okay, um, do you recognize this? This is one minus cosine square. We can actually turn it into a sine square, right? So we have one over four integral of just sine square of two X dx. And so now this is what I mean that you need to do the half angle um, trick the second time. As you can see here, we are still integrating a square and there was no easy way to do it, right? And so what we are going to do right now is that we got to apply the half angle formula for the sine version one more time. So one thing that I want to point out right here is that now instead of having X as our original angle, we are having two X as our original angle. So let me just highlight this two X right here. This is the angle that we're looking at and it's two X, right? It's two X. So we have the two X right here. And then you may say, how what happens when we apply the half angle formula? So uh, if you look at the formula right here, if you have an x here, when you turn this expression into the expression on the right hand side, you are actually going to double the angle that you have here because this angle is half of that angle. So when you actually turn it to the right hand side of the expression, you are going to get double of that angle. So you got to double this two x. So when we apply. Then we are going to get one over two, and then one minus cosine of two times, times what? Times this purple two X right here. And then, yeah, so we still have the closing the bracket. And then we have the dx. Yeah, so that's what happens. That's 2x. And when you turn it into this expression right here, you got to double it. So you got to do two times whatever that you see here. And then from here, we are going to uh, bring out the one half also so that you are going to get one over eight because we don't need to worry about this constant here. So the next step, you are going to see the integral as one over eight and then the integral of one minus cosine of four X. So this step is just cleaning up the previous step. And then now, uh, as you can see here, we can integrate the one directly we can integrate the cosine of 4x directly. So now it will become a really easy problem. So we have one over eight, and then the antiderivative of one is going to be just x. And then the antiderivative of cosine 4x is going to be sine of 4x. And then you need to multiply by, 
what is that the reciprocal of the coefficient of the x and so the answer that we're getting is one over four and then you have the constant of integration here basically this problem is finished but we can actually distribute the one over a so that we don't have brackets anymore so finally we have the answer as one over a x minus one over 32 sine of four x and then plus c and then we're finished with this problem okay it's actually um not too bad assuming that you have the half angle formulas um there is actually another way to integrate this without first applying the half angle formulas you can use the double angle formula to rewrite this expression so you only need to uh, apply the half angle formula one time i think it's one time let me think so we are going to get sine of 2x and then you're going to get the square and then you turn the sine square of 2x into that then yeah so that will be faster so that you don't need to apply it multiple times so i will do another video on the same integral but i'm going to use a different approach to integrate this function okay so that's it for this problem if you like this video please subscribe to my channel Give me a like, leave me a comment, and then also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.